Today, we're talking about why does your hip pop? Or clunk or snap. Uh, the fancy term for this is coxa saltans or snapping hip syndrome. A lot of people have been told things. It's actually really common. Um, so a lot of people will elucidate this when they're doing like, you know, old school like bicycles. Uh, in our office, if we're doing like a dead bug and we lower the leg. As we lower the leg, sometimes I get a big clunk. Rarely is it painful. Sometimes it is. Um, so what's going on with that? Uh, the, the big hyped muscle, the psoas, uh, that Joe Rogan and everybody else is digging in, you know, with their so right on, um, your psoas, your iliopsoas is kind of the culprit of the clunk, but then we got to kind of elucidate a couple different th things about that. So let's look at the anatomy first. So anatomy. So off of, uh, basically we should draw one more vertebrae here because we got the fifth. Uh, so if we had one more vertebrae, so off of T12, uh, almost all the way down to L4. So we kind of have these like fibers that kind of drape off of the anterior later lateral body of these vertebrae and they kind of sweep down inside the pelvis and then your iliacus is on the inside of your pelvis and blends with this psoas to make the iliopsoas that then wraps down around the femur, around the pelvis to attach onto the lesser trochanter of the femur. So it should make sense then that now if this is running across the hip, when I have some sort of stability dysfunction, usually around your lumbar spine, how this muscle may be uh, creating excess tension across this joint interface. So how does this happen? So like I said, imagine, yes, now I'm the chiropractor that has a spine in a video. Never done that before. Why not have its debut? So if I'm in a position um, where I'd be lying flat or in supine like this, what we would hope that somebody would be able to do is at like TL junction, which is where kind of this muscle starts to originate from. So that's like T12 L1 around that area. Just think like thoracic lumbar spine meat. We should be able to flatten or stabilize that area, our whole lumbar spine into the table, floor, whatever, with adequate stabilization from the musculature around the abdomen, the core, right? Including musculature in the pelvic floor, that's your obliques, your ex abdominis, transverse abdominis, uh, lumbar erectors, this good synergy around the canister with adequate pressure. Look up the video on intra-abdominal pressure if you're more inter interested in that. But when I have that good synergy, this muscle can now eccentrically elongate as I go through hip extension or I move to hip neutral from hip flexion. Um, without creating excess tension over that lesser trochanter, technically it's the, the tubercle uh, right over that lesser trochanter when you get that snap or that clunk. So why do most people get this clunk? Because as they go from this position and let's say their leg is now flexed, so um, if we wanna draw what we'd be kind of imagining this person is doing right now, so bear with me here that if uh, somebody's in kind of a dead bug, so there's their head, they're laying on the table, they have a really long torso, I don't know why, here's their hip. Uh, leg or hip is flexed at 90, knee flexed, ankle flexed, and now we're asking them to start to lower their leg back to neutral. What you'll see a lot of people do is escape into extension, so they just don't know how to stabilize their lumbar spine, so now they're so as is acting as a stabilizer from the anterior portion of the spine, which the only thing that stabilizes the spine from the front is intra-abdominal pressure. So instead of being able to keep the spine in a neutral position, oh, spine neutral, yeah, Andrew Spina is gonna come after me. They pull their lumbar spine into extension, going a bit of an anterior tilt, creating kind of a pressure point around um, where the psoas crosses across the pelvis, clunk. We get it. We test people all the time and say, hey, when you're gonna to get to that clunk, can you really depress into the table, create intra-abdominal pressure and try to get rid of it? Is it a pathologic finding? That would be the next thing. Um, is it necessarily bad? Not really. Um, a lot of people are walking around with that due to, you know, they're super mobile, they don't have great pressure. Inherently, is it gonna cause an issue? Not necessarily. You may get some hypertrophy of the tendon there. Um, not very much. It's a broad-based tendon that kind of fans out around there. Um, where most people, you will get some calcification of that tendon that can cause some hip impingement, which you'll find on MRI. Um, due to densification or edema in the tendon, we can see that there's kind of that pinch point. But rarely is that the pain generator, right? And uh, some orthopedic surgeons now will do intra-articular ejections with lidocaine, marcaine, see if that alleviates pain. If not, maybe they go into that kind of point 
the anterior portion of that tendon injected and you know have you go through some motion if that would elucidate it cool but by itself it is not a pathologic finding it can be an indicator of other functional um, or dysfunctional uh, findings elsewhere like we just explained so then the question is well how do you work on it well you get better at the stuff that we just said wasn't that good you learn how to stabilize your lumbar spine and tl junction in the sagittal plane first which is largely done through intra-abdominal pressure and good activation of the oblique slings that kind of keep your lumbar spine neutral as you move your pel or move your femur around your pelvis and then also your pelvis against your lumbar spine too often we see this kind of parasitic motion or um, where people if i was going to say hey can you go into extension it would be anterior tilt extension through the lumbar spine if it was flexion, it would be put like, we don't have very good um, dissociation of movement. It's just this kind of like, like I said, parasitic motion. You're not sharing motion across the segments. You're just pulling um, from the segments that you need uh, better stability at. And then we usually lean on passive tissue in these scenarios, like ligament, bone, things like that. In this case, we're using an active tissue, a muscle, to stay in a bit of concentric load. And then the fact that it can't fully eccentrically unload um, creates that snap. So that's why your hip snaps, it may not be a bad thing by itself. It may be a finding that's correlated to something else. And I have tons of videos along with some other practitioners out there on how you can go about fixing this if it needs fixing or how you can just work on it to improve your stability overall. There you go.